Well, speaking of wiggle room, I mean, we're talking about a variety of scenarios here where people can have wiggle room. We talked about, you know, being in caloric deficit mm -hmm. gives you a little more wiggle room. Yep. Being in a ketogenic or, you know, close to a ketogenic yeah. state seems to give you more wiggle room. Um, but what about being like highly physically active? Absolutely. Yeah, good. I love how you're framing that with this context, these themes of wiggle room. Where do you have a little bit of margin to work with? Yeah, absolutely. Exercise is one of those other uh, outlet, if you will, where if you have energy that you need to account for, exercise is going to be a wonderful way to do it. Um, I, I often don't focus so much on, ins uh, on exercise because I don't want to convey to people that it can outdo the diet. There, there was a paper published in Women where they looked at a very structured and intense exercise program with just it was, I think it was just low carb diet and the low carb diet had better metabolic improvements than the strength training did. And so diet is going to generally smart, smartly done diet. So changing nutrition is going to yield better long-term benefits with metabolic health. However, the exercise, I'm an enormous advocate of exercise. Uh, and to me, you are not going to go, it's one thing to be metabolically healthy and lean but then it's something else to be lean and sick or, 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 or weak or frail. And that's where, to me, the exercise comes in. So my, my view is you eat smart to be lean and metabolically sound. You exercise to be strong and capable and metabolically sound. So muscle, of course, is the great glucose consumer. When if someone's wearing their CGM and they see the glucose come up and down, 80% of that coming down is what's going in to fuel the muscle. The muscle is just by mass so big and so hungry that the more muscle you have, the more you're going to have this big buffer or what we're calling wiggle room where you're going to clear uh, you're going to clear that glucose much, much faster. So if you had two people of equal body mass, but one having more fat, one having more muscle, but otherwise the same, and that's a big difference though, I know, they eat the same amount of carbs. The guy with more muscle is going to have his glucose curve come up and down, and it'll be back down to normal in an hour, maybe 90 minutes. The person who has less muscle, even more fat, so same body mass, it's going to take much, much longer for that glucose to come down, and thus it take longer for the insulin to come down, because muscle is the main place where insulin is going to escort the glucose to, and it does so very well. If So the more muscle mass a person has, the more sort of metabolic wiggle room they have to clear that glucose. And then the more carbs they can eat, as much as I really point the finger at carbs as a primary problem, the more they can eat. And even to the point where if a person's very active, I knew a guy who was training for a marathon, he would eat over 200 grams of carbs per day and still be in deep ketosis the next morning. Mm -hmm. You'd think, well, no, normally a ketogenic diet is no more than 50 grams. Well, unless you're just burning that glucose. Right. And, and also you, you mentioned <clears throat> this, this study that was comparing strength training to, yes. to the you know, low Aerobic. carb. Right. Well, I think also high intensity interval training when you're doing, you know, there's, there's a lot of work on. So we're talking about how exercise can improve metabolic health. And I think it is a really important um, le lever to pull here because you you're you're activating these glute four transporters mm -hmm. and it does that like that activation happens through lactate the generation of lactate which is happening when you're really pushing yourself hard yeah and and so at that point you know you're you're becoming insulin sensitive too right you so you're you're really kind of changing the 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 scenario in some ways it doesn't i don't personally think it should give people the um justification to go and eat Indulge. tons of pizzas and you know ice cream and as much as people may look at their day and say, I have one hour, I would say everyone, man, woman, old, young, strength train, mm -hmm. strength train. Um, maybe someone, I, I sometimes question my own motivations where I just think if I were in a crisis situation, would my ability to run away from the challenge be better than my ability to face the challenge? No, I don't think so because I'm going to be with my wife and kids and the fact that I can outrun them isn't going to solve the problem. And so I want to be ready to do something if I need to. But even beyond that silly, dramatic scenario, the bigger the muscle, the hungrier the muscle. And given the time constraints that most people have, but even then there are studies to show that minute for minute at that shorter end, if a person's spending, I think it was like 30 minutes a day, the strength training group had better improvements in insulin sensitivity than the aerobic training group. So if you have constrained time, and let's face it, everybody does, default to strength training. 
whatever degree of strength training you can get. And just your, to touch on your point about intensity, just try to go to failure at least at some point during that overall muscle or that movement get to, it doesn't have to be a high weight, low rep. Even if you're doing a lower weight, higher rep, just get to failure 